welcome to episode 16 of Give a Fuck, presented by Spark Consciousness. I am your host, Sarah Woodard. Among other things, I am a certified shamanic practitioner, Reiki master teacher, activist, educator, speaker, and award-winning children's author. I am also a fierce defender of the underdog, which for me means wildlife, companion and work slash farmed animals, Mother Nature, and Gaia herself. I care deeply about my fellow human animals and believe that when we learn to live in harmony with nature, we also learn to live in harmony with ourselves and each other. I am fearless about doing my own inner work and growth and am passionate about helping create a world where all beings are respected and honored. I have a deep connection to Gaia and feel particularly connected in the presence of the beautiful Colorado Front Range. When I am not busy working to present information about living in harmony with Mother Nature and how to use that as part of finding your purpose, I share my time with three wonderful cats, enjoy bird watching, and experiencing all the outdoors has to offer. My life journey to this point has been filled with twists, turns, and changes, as I'm sure yours has too. For me, the constants from birth to now are a strong connection to Gaia, a deep-seated need to serve and help create a more compassionate and healthy world, and a love of both learning and sharing my knowledge. Those lifelong constants are what brought me to this point. All of the knowledge I've acquired in the process of learning to live my life in harmony, as well as new information I come across, are the inspiration for and knowledge bombs presented in this podcast. Through connection to nature, I help young millennial women, and that's women with an X, and others feeling lost, define their values, and find their true purpose in life. The purpose of this show is to present new information and or old information in a new way to help you see connections, live in harmony, and discover your purpose. As a quick reminder, give a fuck is spelled F asterisk K. And a big thank you to my existing patrons on Patreon. So a quick life update. Some of you may remember that I've been looking for this unicorn house and I had talked last time about how I needed to bring some joy into the process and also was trying to lean into what does home feel like here versus what it felt like in New England and what's available in my price range out here and all of that stuff. And so I've had some revelations around a lot of that. The first thing was I realized that although my realtors that I was working with have a great reputation out here, they were not the right realtors for me. I felt like I wasn't a priority. I, anytime I would send them an email about anything, I either got crickets, no response at all, or I got two or three days later, they would respond and they'd say, oh, sorry, this place is already under contract or whatever. Well, it wasn't under contract when I sent it to you 48 hours ago. It was becoming hugely frustrating. And looking for a home is already a stressful process. I needed a realtor to work with that would find the joy in it with me instead of me having to try to hold up the joy while they are dragging the process down. Again, they may be the right match for someone. They were not the right energetic match for me. So I fired them and I set about looking for the right realtor. And life is really funny because what wound up happening was I reached out to my realtor from Vermont. Her sister lives in the Denver area and her, and is, is, she calls herself like a modern day alchemist or something. So she's spiritually inclined and all of that. And her sister recommended this woman, Heather. And Heather, it turns out, is also spiritually inclined, does her own type of energy work and moon gatherings and other cool stuff. So she gets it. She understands the power of how you can manifest a miracle when you know how to work with the universe. She gets it. And she's fun. She gets that, like, some of this is just, let's go look at places regardless of the price. And she's not afraid to, to wicked lowball a price, particularly if it's been on the on the market for a while. If it feels like it's home to me and it feels right and I can submit a bid that feels right to me based on my finances and whatever else, maybe it'll get accepted. You don't know if you don't ask. So she's on board and I'm super excited to work with her and I feel like the joy has returned to this process and being in that joyful place is really an important key piece of this whole manifesting a miracle thing. So super excited about working with her. We'll see what happens. I'm also open to maybe like a duplex or a townhouse type of thing now where I was not so much before. So we'll see what happens. I will definitely keep you posted on 
all of that. At this point in the show, I would typically answer a question submitted via, via Patreon. Since we didn't get any new questions for this week, I thought I would take a second to review a previous question. And I know I've been doing that a lot recently, but sometimes it's also helpful to hear the answer to things multiple times. So I think that this one was was asked by a previous guest. And I'm not, I may not be phrasing it the way that, that he phrased it, but I believe his question was something about how do I connect with nature? And for me, there can be a lot of different ways. And I want to emphasize here for anyone who's trying to figure out how to connect with nature in their own lives, you do not have to leave your house to connect with nature. It certainly helps. But if that is not something that you can do for whatever reason, that's okay. You can still connect with nature. You can look at like nature pictures and nature videos, movies, whatever. As long as you turn off other electronics and really like in your mind, immerse yourself in that nature that you are viewing and or listening to or whatever, you're, however you're choosing to experience it. As long as you allow that to be your sole thing that you're experiencing in your living space. So that is definitely one way that, that I connect with nature. The other things that I really love to do, like I say at the top of the show, is I love to go and just go for nature walks, bird, bird watching, all of that. I actually had this really fun experience with um, a friend of mine. We went for a walk around this lake and I brought my, we were there early in the day. Like bird watching is generally best early, early in the day or right at the end of the day because that's when birds are most active. And we were there early enough in the day that I brought my binoculars and it was super fun. And she got really into help, trying to figure out, like pointing out birds and what is that, Sarah? And she also happens to be my photographer for all of my beautiful pictures on my website. Thank you, Eleanor. And um, she got really into it and she's like, maybe I should take wildlife pictures. How cool was that that I kind of got to open this door a little bit? So that was great. That's definitely one of my favorite ways to connect with nature. Also... I, you know, some days all I can do is go sit on my balcony and look at the mountains, look at nature. Again, as long as you're immersed in that and I'm not out there like on my phone while looking, that is a totally acceptable way to connect with nature. So I hope that helps all of you if you're trying to figure out some ways to connect with nature in your own life. Those are some basic ways that you can start to do it. And they're definitely things that I use in my own life. Now I'm going to move on to the Satan of the show. And I know at the end of last show, I said I was going to talk about animal sanctuaries. But as I kind of sat with that, it didn't feel like the right topic. It didn't feel like it flowed with what we've been talking about lately. So I have shifted gears. And instead, we are going to talk about how what's happening to you in your life is actually happening to everyone. But it looks a little bit different. And I know that maybe sounds a little bit crazy. But tell me this, have you ever had those moments where you are in a conversation with a friend, and you're like, this is what's happening to with me. And they're like, oh my God, that happened to me too. Or that's how I've been feeling too. But their actual specifics of their situation that are bringing out those same feelings are different from yours. You know what I'm talking about? You ever have those moments, right? This is not a coincidence when this happens. This is part of the divine master plan that built the universe. And it's, it's kind of anecdotal proof that what I'm telling you is true. What happens... What, whatever is happening to you is happening to everyone, but it looks different. So here's why, okay? Yes, your life experience is unique. I am not negating that. Everyone's life experience is unique. But here's the thing. Everything on this planet, the planet herself, we are all energetically connected to each other. Some spiritual circles call this the collective. And just for ease of language, I'm going to use that term here, but you don't feel like you have to. 
whatever you choose to call it, quantum science is actually now trying to prove that these connections are real and play an important role in our lives, both individually and collectively. This, this connection, whatever you want to call it, it means that whatever is happening in the collective, it's also happening in your own life in ways that you need it to manifest in your life for your own personal and spiritual growth. And it means that the work that you do to improve your life, raise your vibes, find your purpose, all that good stuff benefits the collective. And by the way, it also means that if you're one of those folks who doesn't do that work, you're pulling the rest of us down. I doubt that's any of you, but in case it is, I'd love for you to hop on board and do the work with us because it would make everyone's life that much better, including yours. So here's another real life example of what I'm talking about in case you didn't think of any in your own. As, as many of you may know, I started going to this forest bathing group and it's really cool. So at the last or no, maybe not the last one, but one of the ones I went to recently, we were encouraged to meditate on the good stuff that's happening in the midst of all the bad stuff. Now, I'm paraphrasing here. The leader used Pima Chodron's words, but mine will do just fine for this purpose. Although I'm sure Pima's were more beautiful. So when time was up, we, we come back to the group and we discuss what came up during this meditation for each of us. And so for me, it was this whole thing about needing to find the positives in my current living situation while waiting for the right move to come up, and also about needing to put the fun back in this home search process, which, as I said at the top of the show, I have figured out at least part of what I needed to do to do that. For another participant, this older gentleman, he was talking about these garden beds that he and his wife have in their front yard, these raised beds, and how he was feeling so overwhelmed by all of the weeds in them to the point where he didn't even feel like getting motivated to get out of his chair to go work on them, which just made the weeds get worse. And I think we've all been there with something, maybe not with weeds, but there's always something in our life where we're like, I know I need to do this, but I'd rather not because I'm just not motivated to do it. We all have those things, right? And But he realized that in order to move past this feeling, he literally just had to do it. He literally just had to get his bum out of the chair and out into the garden beds and start pulling weeds. And so he did. He pushed himself to go do it. And he noticed that as he started doing this, Every time he would finish one section, he felt better and lighter and also more motivated to keep going. And so instead of this overwhelming project, it actually became this thing where he was doing not just physical weeding, but his own internal weeding, right? And so I want you to keep in mind here, he and I didn't talk before this exercise. We had no idea what was going to be the topic for the day. It just played out this way because it was in the collective as something that everyone is currently trying to work through. We, all of us needed to find some joy in the mundane and some happiness in the dissatisfaction, right? This happens all the time. I want you to take a minute and think about some places where you've seen this show up in your life. Has it been a conversation with a friend like the example I gave? Has it been a meditation group? a conversation with a coworker at work or, or whatever it is. Think about those times when there's been these neat overlaps where people are like, oh, I've been struggling with that same thing, but in my own unique way. Think about that. Take, take a minute or two, hit pause and take a minute or two and write them down if you feel like it. But at least hit pause and take a minute or two to think about some examples so you can really get a hold of what I'm talking about here. And when you're ready, hit unpause and we will finish the show. All right, so welcome back after your pause. Good job coming up with whatever examples you came up with. I'm sure they're phenomenal. And if you want to share any of them with me, feel free to shoot me an email or reach out to me on Instagram. I would love to hear what you came up with. So because these connections exist and these non-coincidences happen all the time because of these connections, we have this great circle that is just never ending growth, change, and healing that help us become become better and heal both individually, but also as humanity. And it helps us as humans rediscover how to live in harmony with nature and all of life, both again, in our own lives, but also as the collective. Individually, we were born knowing how to do this, but we are quickly taught how to forget it due to stress societal pressures, and modern-day life. It's just the way it goes. 
it's no one's fault. But this is our chance. These Each of these times when this stuff comes up, this is our chance to relearn how to connect with that and our own souls. So if you are ready to do this work, I have got your back. I'm going to drop some links for you in the show notes of my services just so you can check it out and see if any of them feel right for you. And again, definitely let me know what you came up with because I, I love hearing about these little stories. They, I, they, I find it very exciting. But in the meantime, I am going to move on to housekeeping. You can find me on social media and my website. All of those links are in the show notes for you. I would love to encourage you to share any of these things that came up either during this podcast or any previous episodes as a, as a story in a magazine. It doesn't have to be long. Check out the link in, um, on my website for the magazine for more information or just shoot me a message if you want to know more or if you have never written anything and you're terrified. I'm happy to kind of coach you through that process if you want to have a, st- a story that you feel compelled to share. I want to tell it. If you want to support the show, I would love for you to sign up to be a patron on Patreon. Really quickly, the way that works is that when you opt in and stick around, you get some fun bennies. Everything from submitting a question, which I answer uh, at the beginning of the show, to discount codes and in some levels, even fun merch. You can see them all on my Patreon page, which is in the show notes. And the way this works is 10% of every dollar, whether it's on Patreon or anything else you purchase from me, goes to support charitable causes that make the world a more compassionate place. In the case of the podcast specifically, so Patreon specifically, the other 90% pays for hosting, software and equipment if needed, and also toys to help keep the Katie Babies happy while I ignore them to create each episode for you. You can also... If you Patreon's not your thing, you can also sign up to to sponsor a single episode. And all of that information is in the show notes. If your podcast platforms allow, I would love it if you would take a second to rate the show. It helps other people to feel encouraged to listen to it and therefore helps me expand my reach. And it's absolutely free. It's a great way to support any creators that you love, not just me. In two weeks, we are going to talk about how to know if you're on a spiritual journey or need to start one and what that looks like, how to begin one, what that looks like. In the meantime, continue to expand your knowledge, feel the connections, and live with compassion.